And last, but by no means least, Shing. Hi, so I'm going to share seven short stories and one cliffhanger, hopefully, which some of you may be writing part of the conclusion to. Not about Tetris, but about 12 little people playing with falling blocks and making some new shapes. So, story number one. Wow, this moves a lot slower. There are large education companies who know they need to reinvent themselves, but are oftentimes building for schools or districts rather than individuals. At the same time, there's a new kid in the picture. Tech startups, oftentimes bright, passionate people, but usually who haven't taught in K-12 classrooms before. And both of these guys are living in this beautifully designed world outside of school. So that begs the question, how can the same kind of attention and priority to end user needs and behaviors that goes into the shape of new commercial products like the iPhone go into the shape of new K-12 learning products. So the idea we're toying with is what would happen if we brought different disciplines into the same space to hack together, namely teachers thinking very deeply about the designing of learning act interactions with um, technologists thinking very deeply about the design of digital interactions. And so for the past few months, uh, a small collective of teachers, technologists, and designers have been meeting up at iBeam, which is an art and tech space in New York City, and engaging in a, essentially an extended hackathon of sorts. And some stories are beginning to emerge. Story number two, the discussion board, which oddly has looked pretty much the same for a super long time. Fairly ugly, threaded, asynchronous text. And uh, one of our teachers who was trying to engage multiple classrooms in a debate about the justification of war and asking how it could be different. So this is one of our prototypes, uh, Discussion Spawn, which is a drag and drop user interface where you can put multiple types of media prompts, including text, videos, uh, images, on which you can start to engage in asynchronous or synchronous discussion. And the other piece that uh, Discussion Spawn was playing with was how semantic data might actually be engaging for students. So for example, if you start seeing your word counts or your word choices and how that influences the number of people who support you or don't support you. And that leads me to story number three, which is this love around data viz right now. And people like Nick Felton in real life who are starting to show the addictiveness of tracking our personal data. Not that all of us are tracking all our transportation rides or every piece of music that we are listening to, but what that might suggest about what personal learning data, aside from a report card, a learner might care about. So this is my learning story, which was a prototype we built, which lets you kind of track your actions, your behaviors, and your moods in order to create this narrative of your learning process through time, which as it rolls up may cause you to be able to see things and reflect on your own personal data and learning, like seeing maybe I actually don't dig vampires so much, maybe I actually kind of like Shakespeare or Hamlet more. Uh, so, uh, actually that isn't what it's going to look like, but it may look like something else eventually. Anyways, RoboGirl is the next story about students who may not naturally be inclined towards engineering or robotics or towards structured gameplay, and teachers who may not have enough funds to buy all component parts for um, a bunch of radios or to build a gigantic robot. So, on these series of electronic missions, as you're successful, you unlock these component parts, which are kind of like Lego building blocks, but are actually capacitors and resistors in which you can take into your future shed and start building things and playing around with things, questions you have. Story number five is about how our eyes often glaze over when we see um, equations as the first thing we learn and how our time spent looking at Spider-Man or um, at skateboard tricks on YouTube actually might be great hooks into understanding and applying those equations. So Real Amin is kind of like delicious meets Mythbusters, where as teachers are browsing in their everyday lives, they can pull in popular cultural artifacts to integrate into their teaching. So this is now going, okay. And then finally, story number six is about peer-to-peer -peer learning through teaching. And um, our students basically were creating math tutorials for each other recorded through mobile devices, which were also able to be accessed through a physical installation. And we actually had students asking to watch more tutorials. Story number seven is about special education students who, even though they were in eighth grade, still had to learn really mundane words like cat and mat. And that's how we came up with Read Rap Rock, a hip hop karaoke game in which their kids are engaged with music and sound and like Mario Brothers, they're singing away at karaoke and may end up at level one, but as they're moving along, they may start to unlock more words in their word box and riffing a bit off of hip hop culture, end up battling in freestyle. 
And so those are really quick two to three sentence descriptions of some of the prototypes that have emerged from our little collective. And we've been keeping our ideas and our concepts and our code base open in order to say, please, more people join us, or please, more people prioritize and um, bring different disciplines into the same spaces and rethink together and make together. And the cliffhanger is, who else wants in on these kinds of collectives?